uh, specification developed by ARM. And uh, the motivation of having this code is because uh, I'm a, a upstream maintainer for the uh, uh, an automotive chip, which is called S32G. Uh, that's uh, automotive chip developed by NXP. And uh, since that chip is based on the SCMI, so I think it deserves to, uh, having a talk. All right, and I'm Chester Ling from the Huawei Enablement Taipei team. Okay, uh, so uh, SCMI means uh, System Control and the Management Interface. Uh, it is a um, specification define a set of uh, standard uh, software interfaces so the SCMI agents can just follow the same protocols to communi communicate with the uh, SMI server. And uh, it ends to uh, management uh, platform resources. Uh, for example, you can uh, use a CMI to manage it, such as a clock, pin uh, control, and a, a variety of hardware resources that SCMI can support. And uh, it also provides how abstractions means that agents don't have to know the details how the, those highway works. They just uh, need to call the uh, common APIs. Besides, it also increases the security since the, those driver implementation can be hidden in the uh, server side, especially if those server is running in the secure world. That's a uh, uh, system overview, overview I capture from the uh, uh, ARM's document design paper. And uh, as you can see that there are multiple agents can exist, exist at the same time in a uh, system. It could be a, a rich OS such as Linux kernel or the autos uh, running in a uh, um, device or even some uh, secured firmware instance running in the secure world. And uh, in uh, uh, every uh, SCMI instance, they also uh, have some uh, stakes for uh, uh, SCMI protocols and the transpose. We will uh, talk about that later. And uh, um, Let's talk about the protocols that SCMI can support. For example, uh, the best protocol is used to discover the uh, platform information, such as uh, uh, product versions and the vendor names or even the permissions of uh, those uh, supported the protocols. And the uh, power domain management, not just uh, to uh, do the power management for the CPU, but also other uh, devices inside the uh, system or even a, a, a power domain can also uh, consist of a lot, a multiple uh, uh, components, but not, but not just one. The clock menu means uh, uh, you can set get clocks through the SCMI. And the sensor manager for hard managing and uh, reset domains are used for handling the uh, 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 domain reset, but not just uh, the CPU reset, it can also be uh, a certain kind of uh, uh, reset process for a specific device or multiple devices at once. And uh, voltage domain is used to uh, control and manage, uh, manage those uh, for such, such as regulators or, or the power source but used by a chip. And power capping is for, uh, for, for example, the throttling case or you need to uh, De uh, decrease the, the power consumptions. And then, uh, okay, sorry, I just lack of uh, performance per protocol in this case. Performance protocol is for the DVFS. We usually call that uh, CPU frequency scaling. And then the last one is pin control. There's a very new protocol just added in the latest uh, SCMI spec. And uh, now I would like to introduce how many uh, uh, tra transports that SCMI protocol can support. Uh, first of all, it's a uh, uh, shared memory based transport, we usually call that SMT. And in this uh, transport, there are two modes that a uh, developer can choose. For example, uh, the pool base uh, means uh, the client, SCMI client has to wait for the response, get back from the server. 
and uh, uh, unless uh, the, the timeout happens. And uh, uh, in the meanwhile, the, the, the interrupt base means uh, client don't have to wait. They just uh, send a message uh, through the uh, shared memory and uh, just come go back to do other stuff. And then the SC, once the SCCMI server uh, successfully deal with those requests and uh, generate the response, then uh, it will uh, notify the uh, SCMI client by uh, com completion interrupt interrupts so that a registered interrupt service routine will be called in the SCMI client. And uh, then it would uh, deal with the, the response accordingly. And in this picture, you will see a term which is called doorbell. That's a very important technology used by the shared memory. Uh, it means uh, uh, a client can use the doorbell to uh, allow a server to uh, actively uh, receive uh, the SCMI request from the uh, shared memory. And uh, generally, uh, this doorbell can be implemented by either the hardware mailbox or the, uh, we call that, SMC means a secure monitor call. It's a call that uh, uh, normal work can uh, trigger the firmware running in the secure world. Okay. And uh, the second transport that SCI support is ACPI. That means uh, uh, SCI can re SCMI can rely on the uh, ACPI channel to uh, send SCMI requests. It relies on uh, table called the platform communication channel defined in the SCPI spec. And uh, the type of suite is very suitable for SCMI, SCMI to transfer uh, shared memory based uh, uh, data. And uh, instead of the normal channel, there's also uh, a fast channels. I, I will talk about la it later, but uh, obviously that uh, fast channel need a specific handling for its uh, shared memory or MMBAS uh, solutions. And uh, the final transport that SCMI supports is a virtual SCMI, means uh, 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 it, it's um, a plan that try to enable the SCMI communication through the virtual I.O. And uh, currently the uh, uh, virtual I.O. transport has been merged and supported by the Linux kernel for the uh, SCMI uh, client. As for the SCMI server, uh, I think it's still in a development stage. Uh, as you can find from the Linaro nodes, uh, uh, Jira, uh, they, they are planning to run the uh, SCP firmware. SCP is, SCP is a kind of processor that I use to uh, control or manage the uh, system power for those ARM systems. Yeah. And uh, uh, they, they, are, they are trying to do some experiments for running the SCP firmware on uh, the uh, host, uh, uh, virtual host backend. And uh, I, they, I think their patches haven't been merged into the upstream SCP. They still maintain that uh, in their downstream. Okay. Anyway, the, 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 those uh, virtual device specification has been defined and uh, merged by the OSS uh, for the I.O. spec, you can see that uh, and then find their device ID. Okay, now I would like to uh, introduce uh, how SMI agents and client can uh, communicate with each other. I, I just list uh, some, uh, some of examples, but not all of them. It depends on how you design the architectures. Uh, before I introduce those uh, communication, communication models, I would like to uh, introduce some uh, basic ideas. Uh, for example, the channels. Uh, but typically, there are two uh, basic channels that SCMI use. Uh, for example, agent to platform means a message you could send from the agent to the platform. Uh, they are usually uh, synchronous or asynchronous. And uh, platform to agent means uh, sometimes uh, some machine need to be uh, uh, replied by the uh, platform firmware, or there is uh, some uh, uh, critical events need to be uh, raised and let the uh, agent be aware of that. That's how uh, they use for the P2A. And then, um, for example, those uh, critical events could be a, a, a system shutdown, power up 
or suspend so that a CMI agent could be awake and uh, do some actions accordingly. Yeah. And uh, uh, the, uh, there's a special channel which is called fast channel. It's a unidirectional and uh, it's designed to uh, reduce the, the command latency. Means uh, it, the uh, CMI request, uh, re request could be just delivered and uh, uh, the uh, CMI client don't need to wait for the result. They just, they just got returned, uh, work as a um, uh, synchronous mode. Yeah, and uh, in this special channel, that there's no need for having a message uh, head, head header. Yeah, but it's only supports, supported by specific command in uh, performance and uh, power cap protocols. Okay, uh, now let's uh, take a look how, what kind of connection that a SCMI client and the server can have. In this scenario, uh, the uh, CMI server can be run, run can be run in a secure world. It could be run at uh, the trusted OS such as OPT or, or the SCP firmware. It depends on how you design that. And uh, uh, when a normal world delivers a uh, CMI request, it would. Uh, uh, populate their data to the uh, shared memory first and then use the S SMC code as store bell. So the EL3 firmware inside the security world will be activated and uh, start processing the SMC code and then f uh, based on uh, its information forward uh, those requests to the, uh, the instance or who, are re uh, who is really running the SCMI server. And that server will fetch the uh, request from the shared memory. Okay, uh, since we have mentioned about the SMC, I would like to briefly uh, introduce how, what is SMC code? It's uh, actually defined in the SMC coding convention. It's also developed by ARM, and uh, it could be either a uh, fast call or yet call, depends on if it's atom uh, atomic or not. Yeah, and uh, it could uh, it could be a uh, thirty two bit long or sixty four uh, sixty four bit long, and it it could be categorized by its uh, um, uh, functionality. For example, uh, for those uh, calls towards to the uh, hypervisor, it could be the HVC call. Yeah, depending on how what kind of a function uh, that call might have. And the, the the most important field is the uh, function identifier. Identifier, it's used by the uh, we we call that SMC transport. That transport need the uh, uh, that identifier to, in order to understand uh, how to activate uh, the registered handle in the uh, 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 secure walls of uh, way space. Uh, for, ex uh, for example, uh, uh, in N NXP S thirty two G. Uh, it uses the SIP uh, uh, service call to identify the, the uh, SCMI request coming from the, the clients. Okay, and uh, another implementation is that you don't need the uh, trusted OS. You just uh, simply implement it, the uh, uh, SCMI server inside the uh, EL3 firmware. But some but you still, you, you can still uh, dedicate some uh, SCMI uh, requests to the SCP firmware if your uh, solution integrate a SCP trip. Uh, that uh, the third case is that uh, the normal world can run a hypervisor instance. Instance, for example, the uh, 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 SCMI request could deliver uh, through the. Uh, uh, SMI stack, and then you use the uh, HVC code to carry uh, the data to the hypervisor. Then the hypervisor can forward the uh, request to either uh, a normal world run, uh, the SCP firmware running in normal world, or the uh, SC, SMCI server running in the secure world. It uh, actually it depends on how you implement uh, your uh, uh, design in uh, hypervisors. And uh, the final uh, case is that um, uh, both uh, SCMI 
clients and the SCI server can run in uh, virtual environments through the uh, 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 virtual I.O. Uh, for example, the uh, SCMI request could be uh, delivered from the uh, guest OS, I, I mean the uh, VM guest, and then use the uh, uh, virtual I.O. transport to uh, aid uh, those uh, SCMI requests to a virt queue. And uh, once the virtual queue has been uh, propped by the uh, SMI server in the uh, uh, virtual backend, then the, the request will be at the queue and uh, processed by the uh, SMI server running in another VM instance. And uh, for this case, I only see that Linaro tries to uh, run a virtual uh, 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 SCP firmware as a, a virtual backend, and uh, they just uh, gather uh, the SCM request and uh, do some uh, uh, responses to the uh, mm, uh, the VM guest. But I haven't found any re uh, real implementation for uh, the, the the dash line. That means uh, uh, for real uh, for some ideal cases. Those requests could ev even uh, forward to uh, a dedicated channel to, for example, to the uh, SCP firmware. Uh, I, I mean the SCP uh, processors outside the uh, the S outside the uh, hypervisor, so the 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 true SCP uh, instance can deal with those uh, SCMI requests. Yeah, the, I I haven't seen any uh, implementation, but I I do have. Seen uh, uh, IFC in the uh, sense uh, mailing list, they try to implement uh, the delegation between the uh, 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 SCMI server running in the uh, VM to the uh, uh, the um, to the SCP or the other instance outside the hypervisor, so they can do the real uh, clock or reset handling stuff. Okay, uh, since we are a Linux-based system, I will mainly focus on how SCMI stack is implemented in Linux kernel, and my study is based on the uh, uh, newer uh, kernel version 6.3. And as you can see, there are major, and uh, there are three major layers for the SCMI stack. And I simply divided them by two different categories. Uh, it, uh, in uh, common uh, driver layers, uh, uh, each uh, protocol has its own uh, driver file and their uh, subsystems depends on uh, its functionality. For example, the system power clock, uh, power capping, and, and the voltage, etc. And each um, common driver also has associated protocol driver inside the um, SCMI's firmware stake. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and they are usually used for dealing with some uh, protocol details so that a common, a common driver don't have to uh, know about them. They, they just need to call the specific o operate, uh, operations uh, offered by the uh, protocol drivers. And uh, the, the core driver inside the protocol driver is responsible for dealing with some uh, basic, uh, uh, for example, the device regi registration, device create, and uh, uh, some, uh, uh, for example, the bus notifier because uh, uh, SCMI stake creates a brand new uh, SCMI bus inside the uh, Linux kernel to deal with those uh, SCMI device creation. And uh, the driver does sees, uh, defines a lot of uh, common APIs and uh, uh, also uh, uh, work as a bridge to the uh, transport layers. And uh, in transport layers, uh, they are categorized by their uh, uh, channel type. For example, the shared memory could have a one on uh, isolated uh, driver file, yeah. And uh, uh, this transport uh, layer is uh, 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 is the, um, they, they truly face to the their data transmissions. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it depends, it could be interrupt or, or poor, poor based, yeah. It, it depends on your design. 
if you uh, reserve a re uh, interrupt in your uh, system, then you can just use the, um, they, they name that call A to P interrupt, but you have to describe that in the, your device tree. Yeah, so that uh, the, the command driver will uh, recognize that and uh, register the uh, callback function or, or the ISR that you implemented, yeah. Uh, for those uh, asynchronous mode, it, it can be uh, transfer different uh, message at at the same time. But for the the synchronous mode, it's not possible because the 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 uh, SMI request process will be blocked until the response uh, get replied. And then now I would like to introduce some uh, device examples that I can find in upstream. Uh, as you can see uh, on the uh, right, right side, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's an example for the ARM Juno. And uh, in this example, uh, it, it supports uh, totally four protocols. For example, the, the device power domain, DBSS means uh, performance pro pro protocol and the clock protocol, uh, protocol and the, the sensor protocols. And uh, in this case, it uses a uh, uh, mailbox with uh, shared memory at the transport layer. And uh, the left side is uh, a board developed by the NXP. Uh, it uses a different approach. Uh, for example, uh, uh, as, I, I know, uh, as I mentioned that uh, it registers a uh, specific uh, uh, function uh, function identifier, and, uh, and we call that uh, S SMC transport, and uh, that transport will use that specific ID to send the SMC call to uh, the, the the firmware inside the uh, secure world, so the, the the firmware can understand where to find the isolated associated uh, handlers for those uh, SMCI requests, and. Uh, 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 the, the supported the protocol could be flexible. It depends on uh, how you design your board. For example, the IMX, they, it simply support two kinds of protocol, that's a, a power domain and the sensor. And, uh, and now I'd like to uh, go through the, the initialization process, but SCMI running in the Linux kernel since it's very, uh, it, it has lots of details, so I would just uh, raise some point, uh, major point. Uh, first of all, first of all, in the uh, core drivers, uh, the, the bus will be in need. The, uh, uh, a new bus called the SMCI protocol will be registered and created. And then it will call the driver in need. It, it basically call the each uh, protocols uh, registered uh, uh, any functions, yeah, the, those uh, functions are implemented in uh, each uh, protocol driver file, respectively. And once uh, those uh, uh, protocol initialization has been done, all the uh, uh, protocols information will be collected in an, uh, an array which is called SCC MI protocols, it registers some uh, common function used by those specific uh, uh, protocols. For example, uh, the Clark protocol might have its own uh, initialization and then the, the initialization functions, and it would also have its own uh, uh, OPS APIs. So you can see that those API are a void pointer because it could be changed instantly based on the, uh, the, the protocol type. And uh, once uh, all the uh, protocol driver has been initialized, uh, and then uh, we just, it would, the, the, the whole process will just return, return back to the core, core driver's initialization and the uh, uh, SCMI driver, which stands for the, the core driver will be uh, registered as a, a platform driver, then go through the uh, SCMI prop in the SMI part, it will try to find a match. Means that uh, it will uh, pass the device tree and find the SCMI node. In this case, uh, which is called uh, ARM SCMI, 
SMC means it's used. Uh, it uses uh, uh, SM, SMC transport, trans, trans, transport, transport, yeah. And uh, um, then you will you will have to find a match of of uh, that transport data structure, which is described by the uh, a C structure, which is called uh, SCMI uh, DSC. It contains uh, those transports uh, initialization. Uh, function and uh, uh, some uh, relevant operations that belongs to this uh, transport. Then now, now let's uh, uh, let's start from the upper right side. That uh, it continues from the previous page. That when the uh, SI pro uh, is uh, continuing. To do the initialization work, it would uh, register two uh, notifiers. That's uh, uh, SCMI device request I notify and the bus notifier. Yeah, and then uh, the uh, SCMI handle, uh, well, that data structure will be created. That handle is uh, held by the, the code driver. It's used to uh, register some uh, common APIs that uh, the uh, common driver resides in the subsystem driver will be used. Yeah. In the end, they will be uh, linked with each other. Yeah. And then uh, you will start parsing the device tree to find out any possible uh, protocol uh, devices. For example, as I we can uh, see in the previous example, uh, there are two or four protocol nodes inside the uh, SCCI node, depends on uh, its device tree. Then you will be recorded in, into an uh, array which is called active protocols with their uh, specific protocol IDs. Then uh, once uh, all the uh, uh, protocol devices are, are dis discovered, then you would uh, start uh, creating the uh, SCMI true true SCMI uh, devices and uh, do their initialization processes accordingly. Then the uh, 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 device will be just registered, and from the uh, common driver side, it will check uh, whether the, the uh, protocol ID has been found, and by the uh, uh, device tree parsing, and then it will also check if the the uh, device has been created. Then uh, the the driver register will be called in the end. And once the driver instance uh, and uh, the device instance are now pre present, the the match just, the match event just happened. That's uh, uh, notified by driver, and then uh, the 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 bus registered bus re notifier will be called, and uh, the uh, the SCMI handle will be uh, saved uh, as uh, uh, for example the private data inside the. Uh, the subsystem driver, then so that subsystem driver can uh, just call those uh, uh, register callback function provided by the the, the protocol driver. Uh, for example, in this case, this instance in need. Yeah. And uh, anyway, and uh, uh, there's uh, one more uh, actions. Uh, the call driver and the, the subsystem driver will be linked with each other. Yeah, by the device link as a supplier or the uh, consumer. Then uh, since we have talked about the, the, the uh, uh, prior function, now I would like to uh, introduce uh, the message handling. Uh, as we uh, already know that uh, uh, there are multiple uh, protocol operation that can be provided by a single uh, protocol. That, so that means a common driver just need to call those operations. And uh, those operations will be handled by the protocol driver. And uh, those and uh, there are two main kinds of uh, transfer can be made in the uh, SCMI code. That's uh, do transfer or do transfer with response. Do transfer means uh, it, could, uh, it, it basically run in a synchronous or, or pulling mode. And uh, the uh, do transfer with response, it, it, it uh, basically run in uh, asynchronous mode, but it has to deal with the uh, delay response. So uh, the the with response function usually uh, call the do transfer first with some 
parameters so the do transfer could uh, uh, recognize if it's syn in synchronous mode or uh, synchronous, mode, in synchronous mode in the end. Yeah. And uh, uh, in do transfer more, it actually just call the uh, callback functions provided by SCCMI transport. For example, the, uh, the, the transport could be offered by either the mailbox or the SMC or the, uh, or the um, Vert.io. Yeah, depends on your, what kind of transport your board choose yeah, for your SCCMI node. And the, uh, instead of uh, that, these two transfer functions, uh, there are also another mechanism, which is called uh, uh, receive callback. It could be either uh, activated by, an, uh, for example, the compre completion interrupt, or either by uh, the uh, other subsistence uh, mechanism. For example, if you choose the uh, mailbox, uh, as there, your trans transport layer it, it actually relies on Linux uh, mailbox subsystem, so it, it's not just uh, the the interrupt coming from the mailbox. It's a complicated uh, mechanism which eventually the mailbox subsystem will inform the the uh, the uh, subscriber to do something if the the received data is pre present on channels. And so that uh, once the, the callback is activated, it will uh, try fetch those responses from uh, the, the SCMI servers and then uh, all the uh, flags will be cleared, I mean uh, complete in the end. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, just a, a best understanding of how the messaging works. Okay. And in the end, I have some miscellaneous topics. Uh, I try to uh, search some uh, boards I can find uh, in upstream, and uh, but most of uh, them are uh, only support uh, supported and implemented in uh, SCP firmware. Although there are still a few uh, uh, instances can be found in uh, Linux kernel. Yeah, for example, as the STM32, Juno, and the Rock, Rock Tree or even the, and some NXP implementations. Yeah. And as for the S2, S32G, uh, the, the SCMI implementation is still uh, implemented in downstream. Although I, I, I ever try to upstream some SCMI features to the upstream, but um, obviously we need more discussions in order to make sure that uh, both SUSE and, and NXP could and happy with that. And uh, that's uh, some limitations uh, based on my uh, personal uh, thoughts. For example, the, the SACMI protocol can only support some uh, common operations, such as uh, uh, setting or getting a parent clause may not be achieved based on current uh, protocol designs. And uh, 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 in, in the meanwhile, it, it needs more uh, protocol to cover all uh, how many resources we could have in the real world. For example, the battery, the thermal management, and the uh, uh, highway IOs that uh, ACPI really support, because uh, SCI could be an alternative of ACPI if uh, your assistance is uh, pretty limited. If so, the ACPI might be too complicated for you. Yeah, and uh, uh, the the last limitation is that I I I, I haven't found uh, too many platform calls are trained, except the SCP. In SCP, you can see that uh, it has a variety of platforms supported by SCMI, but not the uh, uh, Linux kernel or uh, such as U-boot or trusted firmware. Yeah, and this um, anyway, this um, my final page. Any question? Andreas? So earlier you mentioned Virtio as a transport protocol option. So uh, when you're giving guests access to all those clocks and other um, system resources, probably some level of security needs to be in place so that you, know, you don't turn off the clocks that another guest relies on. 
So uh -huh. has the problem of the non-contiguous IDs been solved for accessing them in the Linux drivers? Or is there some form of mapping going on between what the host uses versus what the guests are using? I think the guests, uh, uh, I mean, uh, guests must follow the, uh, the IDs offered by the servers. So uh, the um, in the server side, the phone uh, SCMI server can recognize those uh, IDs, and it will help uh, to negotiate. Means it's not possible to uh, to accept uh, those requests at the same time. The SCMI server can decide it, uh, how to uh, deal with those requests in sequence. Yeah, they know, yeah. They, actually, there's some um, field which is called agent ID. It's uh, allocated by the uh, SCMI server and the dispatch to all the SCMI agents. Uh, they based on the uh, SCMI agents based on the best protocols to discover uh, what agent ID it has. And then in the following commands, it just, uh, uh, you need to fill the, the uh, agent ID for every commands so that uh, SCMI server can recognize uh, uh, what the, I mean, the, the where the, the SCMI uh, message come from. Yeah. Can you go to the slide where you show different implementations of these different platforms which are using SCMI? Uh, that's just for the upstream I can find. I, and the, because I'm the SSL2G maintainer, so I, I'm more familiar with the SSL2G. But I believe there are uh, more uh, platform implementation, but I just don't know. For example, Gauntlet, it doesn't say SCP. So does it mean it's just running in the, let's say, the SCP I, in, the, in the secure mode? I, I'm not quite sure, but um, I, I, I have checked. Yeah. But I have, if I am, uh, remember correctly, I haven't seen any. Uh, SCP related not found in their uh, device tree. So probably, uh, yeah, they they do not just uh, directly can be controlled by the Linux kernel. Because some, for example, for the uh, for some cases, for example, the Qualcomm trip, you will see the SCP nodes inside the device tree. So there must be some something related to their drivers. Uh, for if I understand correctly, for uh, the case of sc 2 g they they do not rely on a dedicated SCP. Yeah, they just use the trusty firmware to control those uh, power management or clock management. Although they still uh, leave some uh, remain some uh, uh, API to to check whether the SCP is supported or not. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. So yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Sorry, I, I can't answer that question because I didn't do any experience on that. Yeah. Uh, how is this related to the SCI, which covers some of these very aspects now? Uh, uh, generally, PSCI just for the uh, CPU power management. But uh, SCMI is broader than that. SCMI can also control a, a, a single device or even the multiple device belong to a, a specific domain inside the system. Because, uh, for example, in the vehicle's uh, system, you, you might have running a, a, a variety of uh, devices and uh, operating system, but not just Linux. Yeah. So. But if, uh, based on my understanding, the PSV just ends for uh, uh, controlling and management the CPU, but not those peripheral devices. And uh, for some cases, PSI can also forward those uh, management uh, uh, details to the uh, SCMI. Means it can rely on uh, rely on SCMI to do those power management stuff. It depends on how you implement that.
Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, let me show you the overview here. There's the uh, PSCI case. There's a uh, uh, CCI agent two. Although it's, it runs for the uh, PSCI uh, interface, but some uh, request was still uh, forward to the SCMI. That's the case. Means uh, the the firmware running for the PSCI interface, they don't have to. Uh, truly uh, implement the, the, the management, the power management. They just uh, delegate those uh, uh, missions to the SCMI. Okay, uh, anyone? Okay, so I think, um, thank you for your attending. <laughs>